Welcome to the Motoring Podcast, a Honda Civic Type R Review Special Edition. Hello, I'm Alan. Hello, I'm Andrew. Honda Civic Type R. Mm. Mm-hmm. What's one of those, if, if people haven't seen one? Well, it's like a Honda Civic. Okay. But it's... It's got wings and stuff, which actually is not a very good description of Honda Civics because so many of them get so many bits tacked on. Uh, but the Honda Civic Type R is, of course, the top of the range uh, Honda Civic that's available right at the moment. Uh, and the one I had was a Civic Type R a GT, uh, which was absolute top of the range. Uh, the real thing about the... Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll come to some of those bits and pieces in a minute. Um, but, of course, the real thing about the, the Civic Type R is that it is it is, um, it is a fantastically fast vehicle, and it, it's recognised as such. Uh, it's a front-wheel drive hatchback, uh, very much in the same kind of mould as, as your, your Focus RSs, your... Uh, Golf R and these kind of things, but it, it is actually, if if anything, a little bit more outlandish uh, than those. The current model's been out since about 2015, so it has been out a little while. It's not brand new, um, but the Type R itself has been around for about 22 years uh, on various uh, on on various uh, various models. Uh, hasn't always been sold in the UK. The earliest versions were Japan only. Uh, and uh, got very limited spec, but the 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 thing about them was that there was always uh, over a hundred brake horsepower per liter uh, that they put out. Current generation is looking at three hundred and ten brake horsepower and four hundred newton meters of torque. That seems quite a lot through front wheels. Yeah, or is that an old fashioned view now? Um. No, it's not an old-fashioned view. Yes, it is an awful lot uh, through the front wheels. I mean, it has a limited slip diff, um, and it has, you know, some very, very carefully set up uh, suspension settings. But, yeah, it's it remains a lot through the front wheels. And, and um, uh, I might as well say now that lighting up the front tyres was not very difficult if it was even slightly damp. Um so yeah, it does that. It, it it puts that out, and it can reach 167 miles an hour in a hatchback. Apparently, apparently, yeah. No, no, no. I did not reach 167 <laughs> miles an hour. Uh, and not to 60 is about 5.7 seconds as well. If you're um, if you're aiming for the uh, the traffic light, the traffic that light seems quite brisk. Well, it is if you can put the power down. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, it is. It is incredibly, incredibly quick. So, so yeah, so that's what it is. It, it's basically the winged, bespoiled, um, steroidal Honda Civic uh, with um, with an incredibly powerful turbocharged and um, VTEC uh, engine uh, that uh, goes like um, a scalded cat. Cool. Yeah. So, how much did this, this does the GT cost? Well, do you know what was unusual about the one I had? The one I had was completely and totally standard. Uh, So I know, I know. So it comes in completely bog standard uh, at £32,300. And that works out at... If you go for the GT, you can get it in 36 monthly payments of £329, according to the spec sheet in front of me. Um, That doesn't seem that outrageous a price, considering... The power and no, uh, I would presume general excitement. No, it, no, it, no, it, it's <laughs> it's not. And and let's not, you know, let, let let's not mess around. It, it has you're not you're not exactly slumming it. You know, you've got dual zone climate control uh, as part of the GT pack. Otherwise, you just got single. Um, you've got uh, what else do you have? Just about everything. I'm trying to think of what you can pick out. You know, chills and climate control, uh, yeah, sat nav, cruise, cruise control. Um, you've got parking sensors front and rear, auto dimming rear view mirrors, uh, auto lights, wipers, speed limiters, heated door mirror. You know, you, you get the you get the thing. You rear park rear parking cameras. You get the tech that you get in a normal Civic, mm-hmm. um, but you just happen to have quite a bit more power yeah so it, it's it's it is very much it, it was did it feel very much 
as though you were, not that you were in a hatchback, but that it was uh, capable of other stuff as well. It wasn't just a, a rocket ship. Um, right. Let me let me explain a little bit about the one I had, okay? Because the one I had 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 I had a choice of three, okay? Honda gave me a choice of three. They gave me a choice of a white one, a blue one, or a red one, okay? And uh, I thought oh, I'm not going to take the white one because it's just going to always look grubby in all the pictures. I'm going to take the blue one because. Um, I'm going to take the blue one because the last press car I had was blue and it was a bit blue. Um, as it, but that's one of the best colours for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, but And there was also a red one. So I chose a red one. Uh, the trouble was that the red one that I chose was the hardest work to the lot of them. It's, when I had it, because it was... How do I put this? It was a bit harsh. There was something about about it that I got in and every time I saw it it was really harsh and I, I, I and I don't mean when I went along the suspension was very very firm I don't mean that the engine sounded rough or something but it was as if there was a there was a something not quite right somewhere that the possible that just made it sort of very kind of vibratey uh, to me anyway and I, I and I, I went. I've spoken to to loads of people. I've spoken to Honda. I've spoken to to other people who've driven the Type R um, when I got the chance. And I've explained this to them, and they've they, they've said it was probably the one I've done. And I, I had. And when I looked on YouTube and I went sniffing around a bit, it doesn't surprise me, okay? Because it's sat nav. I think just about every circuit in the UK uh, was <laughs> listed in was in the sat nav. There are many YouTube. Films are not just clips; they're full-length films which involve this car, the, the car I had, being absolutely pasted around circuits, cart tracks, sprint tracks, everything. So this poor car so had, it's had a, a hard, hard life. life. So the one I had seemed incredible, and it was about to be defleted. Um, so the one I had has been had had a really hard time of it. Re- you know, far far more than it's. Because we know that motor journalists are very abusive, especially with well, yeah, especially with a Civic Type R. You know, the first well, thing yeah. they can do is take it, take it to a track, and and you know, I asked Honda and they said, well, it's been on more track days than I can even think to count. Um, so that that had a lot to do with mine. So I found it. So we've got that huge caveat. This one okay. was not box fresh, um, right. and. Uh, 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 and I think that, that that had an effect on that because I did find it, you know, taking it on normal drives. I did a couple of drives with it. I I, I took it right out to um right out into Wales, um, just when I first got it. Uh, and it was and it was it was it was good. We'll talk about that in in a bit, I'm sure. Um but I, I also did a couple of sort of work trips uh, with it. Um and it for, for me personally it failed the airport test because i found it really i just found it really hard going i mean i took it from so what's the airport I took, test? well i took uh, um the airport test is the airport test is when you've had a long day in workshops you've sat around you've traveled you've sat around an airport for a bit you've got the flight back you get to luton or heathrow and you just uh, and it's whether you're dreading the drive home, or you're actually quite looking forward to the driving drive home. So the okay. the airport test when you get into the car and you and you think, okay, I'm ready for the drive home. It your vehicles that fail it is when you get in your oh god, I have to drive home. Do you think that was down to the fact that this uh, of the just explained caveat? Not entirely. Okay. The ride. Okay. Uh, okay. So. It's possible there are two things that made this quite hard to drive to me, and one was the fact that it was so flaming quick. Okay, let's let's not be bad. This is a fantastically fa- quick car with a an a, an awesome engine, really amazing engine. Um, you know, it, it's got the, the turbo kicks in, and but there's kind of three zones to the to the the rev counter. And the first one is that the is that you you start off and up until about two two and a half thousand. You think hmm, it's, it's brisk enough, 
And then from two and a half thousand to about four and a quarter, you get this whoo as the turbo kicks in. And then at about four and a quarter until seven and a half, the VTEC kicks in as well. And it's just like, <laughs> um, down the road. You, you, you couldn't see I, what I've I was been doing. I've lucky enough to drive one on a track, and that is quite intoxicating. On a track? So, amazing. Yeah. Must be. Uh, so, I think you have done track. very well not to lose your license. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Uh, you're right. I, I I received no points on my license uh, in the week I had this. And to be honest... And some ladies and gentlemen may say he was not trying hard well, enough. Yeah. Uh, well, the first... <laughs> no. I'm joking. Um, the, do not so for the first three or four days, driving. basically, any time I was in this car, I was going... As long as I wasn't in town. If I was in town, I was going really very slowly because the suspension is so hard. Now, I'm someone who has in the past voluntarily fitted coilovers and stuff to cars. Um, but the suspension, this was phenomenally firm. Uh, and you go around town and you're doing the whole the Irish with coilovers thing of trying to avoid, trying to avoid the pothole. I'm really trying to avoid the potholes, as in slowing down to make sure you can get around the potholes, not just okay, I'm going to try and avoid them. Um, because it was just like go, 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 go. and you, you, mm. you know, and it was really not n- not comfortable in town. But once you're out of town, everywhere you go, you're going 30 miles an hour faster than you think you are. You think you're doing 60, you're doing 90. You think you're doing 70, you're pushing the ton. Um, and it was just it was so stressful. Trying desperately not to lose my driving license. Because if I lose my driving license, it's a bit of a pain. It's not just my car one, it's my truck one, and it's all sorts of other stuff too. As well as, you know, losing your license. Um, uh, so, so yeah, so that was, I, I for the first few days, I, I did find it quite stressful until I, until I adapted to, to, to the, um, to, to the kind of progress that the car made. Um, it, it, even then, you know, it was a sublime, sublime passing machine. Uh, and I think that if you were on a very long run somewhere, it would be great. But in the sort of mixed British roads, I, I didn't, I, I, I found it, I don't know, I'd want to live with it. The, okay. The, the other thing that, that comes into that is, um, is its looks. Now, personally, I think they're great. Okay, I, I really do. Um, you know, I, I like the, I, I, I like the kind of steroidal, venti, wingy, little low-down winglet type look and things that that that's going on there. Uh, that it that it has. Um, I, I really do like them a lot. I like the fact that you can see the monster Brembo uh, twin pot. I think they're twin pot front brakes uh, on it. Uh, and the same at the back. I, I think they're really great, but it, I mean, it, and the red's lovely. By the way, the, the red, I should point out, is the only colour for which there isn't a colour tax. Okay, if you want the blue, the white, uh, the grey. Grey's fantastic. Grey's really nice. Grey is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I presume you were noticed in the red because that really does stand yeah. out. <laughs> Those other colours, five hundred twenty-five quid extra, by the way. Red is standard. The, the, the um, blue and the grey, you don't. St- I, I am. You don't stand I, I out. They much. suit the car well, mm. but you don't stand out quite as much either. Red was fantastically photogenic. Suit, suits me, um, but yeah. Uh, so you don't really attract the, the best type of attention. You, you attract two kinds. So, uh, I mean, there's one kind which is the nice car, mate type of attention when you're filling it up at the petrol station uh, and stuff. And and I, I guess I should have done sensible things like record my miles per gallon and stuff. I think it was 20 or 26 ish I was getting. Um, uh, but, you know, and people would say, oh, nice car, mate. And then just keep walking. You think, okay, that's all right. But at other times you'd either get the sort of dribbly, nice car, mate, um, uh, on one hand, and on the other, you would get people who were actively hostile towards it. Uh, there was one chap. I, really? I was I was in the wrong lane. Um, I accidentally got myself in the wrong lane. 
uh, to go past someone, and someone decide uh, in Northampton because uh, it was a junction. I don't normally go off that direction. I don't normally use it, but I needed to put fuel in the car. Um, and I thought I needed to be in one lane. I didn't. I needed to be two across. And, and he got his the, the, the person driving that car to to pull into a to actually end up in the wrong lane themselves when they should have been the same one as me um so that he could put down his window and start shouting stuff at me oh nice yeah i don't have a clue what he was shouting at me because i just kept the window up Mm. Um, right yeah so so you've got to watch out for that kind of thing because people do sort of label you with 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 a certain certain label and i am you know i'm a relatively christian driver i'm good at letting people out and stuff and so yeah, it was it was not. It was, I'm not not entirely sure. Well, it certainly wasn't. It w- wasn't warranted because I had been indicating all sorts of stuff. And let people through. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so you got to watch out for that kind of stuff, really. Uh, which is a, okay, which well, is what's a shame. It like in what's it like inside then? Well, a lot of it is like a Civic, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, which is uh, having had experience of that is a good thing. It is a good thing. The uh, right, I really like the ergonomics. Okay, I loved the dashboard. Now, the the, the dashboard and the Civic you remember from Andrew's review la, start of the year um, uh, is really cool. It's it's really nice. You've got the 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 speedo is very very far ahead of you. There's a, there's a strip um, with speedo and a couple of other things in there. Uh, there's the rev counter and some of the auxiliary dials are down closer to you and down quite low. So it's almost as if the speedometer and stuff is is it's almost a head up display, but it's just Yeah. It's just yeah, not it reflected is. in the windscreen. It's the thing. It's the thing, yeah. And it's it's cool, it works really well. Um there's also shift lights in there, which trust me, if you're over four and a quarter thousand revs, you need those shift lights. Um because frankly it goes around so quickly you just miss it otherwise. Uh so so the ergonomics brilliant. Really nicely laid out. Great. The touch points are fantastic. Superb steering wheel in it. Um, really nice, nice, sh- uh, you know, uh, metal shift knob and, and and stuff. You'd need one of the little sort of knob warmers for for the winter mind, uh, as is the oh, sh- sh- type bars. Uh, yeah. Um, the. I mean, there was a there was there were back seats. There were back seats and there was a boot, but I didn't really use them. only two back seats. Only two back seats, whatever. Yeah, it was still more than I ever used in it. Um, so, so yeah, they were there. If you want to know more about the boot space in the Civic, Andrew's talked about it at great length. Uh, I couldn't find any curry hooks in the back, though. I did go off for an intentional look. I think that was the only time I opened the boot because uh, I just tended to shove my bag in behind the, the driver's seat. So you'll notice... So what I'm saying is it's, it's generally um, a, a very practical... Hatchback, yeah, loads of leg room. Want it to be a practical hatchback, loads of leg room, split, foldy, whatever back seats in the super clever way that Honda Civics do. All that stuff remains the same. If it's good in the standard Civic, it's good in a uh, 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 it's good in the Type R. What so that wasn't really compromised or changed for the Type R, no, is what you're saying. No, I know that some performance hatchbacks, for example, the seats. The front seats are so bulky and a bit deep um, that they really impinge on rear leg room. That wasn't the case at all. Not at all. The front seats were fantastic. They were bright red, uh, bright red Recaros. Um, and uh, Recaro kind of uh, adjustable buckets. And they were mounted really quite far into the car so you were as close to the center line as they could reasonably reasonably put you um but you know still re- perfectly well in in you know there was no sort of driving with your arms over to one side like one tyrannosaurus arm and one normal arm um it was it was still pretty much square to the the, the wheel and the pedals um but they were these fantastic buckets uh, and it's the first thing anyone said when they got in was like wow i love these these are great. And they were. They were fantastic. Loads of, um, naturally, loads of loads of side bolstering uh, around your thighs, loads of side, side bolstering around your, your ribcage. The only thing they were missing was that they were seats that would be absolutely perfect if you had a helmet on. 
because there was absolutely nothing at the back of your neck and up into your head, which means they probably, if something happened from 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 behind, if someone hit the back of you, not great for whiplash. And also, uh, this car can generate uh, quite an impressive amount of, well, it does. I mean, accelerating both in a straight line forwards and round bends. Um, it's it's building up a fair bit of acceleration, and, and to be honest, I think that's one of the things that I found quite quite hard about the car. Was I end up with very very tense, very very tense shoulders because my not oversized head was you know being rocked from side to side and 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 back and forth. And I I normally have I normally like the headrest to touch the back of my head, and that just wasn't possible because there was a one piece backs on these. I think you could solve a lot of that. Having gone through that whole ramble, I think you could solve a lot of that <laughs> by getting the little, um, you get little cushions for like JDM Yo cars. Um, I actually have them for the, for the, for the Ricaras buckets that I have in the, um, in the Veracross, which just would bring, which would be just be a little cushion that you just rest the back of your head on. I think that would make the world of difference. So, um. So you could probably solve that if it was your own. So that's a top that, consumer tip from that. Is head. a top consumer tip. Um, so from that point, I mean, I would have those. If, you, if I had the little the little cushiony bits, I would have those seats in any car. They were absolutely fabulous. Really great seats. Uh, Good. Uh, so so easy. So um, you've because I've I've asked probably a bit early. You've, you've yeah given because us you, because a, you completely you completely abandoned the order we'd written is what you actually well mean. yes because I I didn't think it through obviously yeah. um, you know me yeah. <laughs> um, so okay we've we've had the caveat that this was a a, a well used Civic Type R yeah um, and you have mentioned that the ride was a bit harsh in yeah. some of the British roads that we but, have. I.e. But, the appalling ones. Yeah. So what else was it like to drive then? But if you got it on the right road at the right time, uh, with nobody else around, it was fantastic. It really was. I mean, I, I went... Um, I just... Could, could we use cliches like man and machine became one and things like that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry, I can't bring myself to use cliches like man and machine became one. <laughs> It's it's terrible. It's one of these things where you've got to sort of try not to sound too much, um, uh, too much like the sniff petrol character whose name I have just had a mental blank and forgotten. I normally remember um, as he he you know he rides the the roads of North Northamptonshire, which is depressingly is where I live. No, it's not. Uh, it'll come to me shortly. Yes. Okay. The editor at large of Dab of Oppo magazine. Um, so, so yeah. So I, I just I had put. So I don't really know the roads of Wales. I've been lots of off roading in in Wales, but I, I really didn't feel that taking the the Type R on, on that was was a good idea. So I got up first thing on Saturday morning, and I mean before first thing on Saturday morning. Okay, the early birds were still considering moving out of their beds to go catch the worms at that point. And um, I just set set the, the sat nav for basically the Snowden Mountain Railway, <laughs> was actually what I put in it, and, and just got in the car and drove. Uh, and that was quite interesting for me because, you know, you got A14, but stretch the motorway, which was deserted, and it was fine until I looked down and realised why I'd arrived at Birmingham quite so quickly. Um Right out the right out the M5 and stuff uh, in towards towards North Wales, um, and it was great. Uh, I sort of saw a sign for the Horseshoe Pass and thought, "Oh, Horseshoe Pass, that sounds interesting." Um, and and so sort of back to you know went did a U turn and went up there because I hadn't didn't know. And, and then only when you're on it, you think, oh, "I've seen this and loads and loads of magazines and loads and loads of YouTube videos and stuff." Um, it is a quality road. I was. I was it was, and it was still so quiet. You yeah, it was still. So- I would never have kept up, but I was gutted I couldn't meet you up. <laughs> um, and I was gutted to some other folk that we know that, that, that stay around there. I would at least have popped in for a coffee if I'd known at the time, to be honest. Um, mm. And yeah, so that was it. Was that 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 was. Uh, that was great. So right over there, a little bit of the Evo Triangle, right the way out, and then I did down and, and back across. And um, and and on the website, I'll have a little outline of, of of roughly what my route was, because to be honest, a lot of it relied on serendipity by that point. 
Um, but I spent about 10 hours in the car that day, basically. Um, and how were you at the end of that? I was absolutely shattered. Completely honest, I was absolutely shattered. I was fine when we were on the awesome roads, but to be honest, the, ride, the drive back, whenever we started getting into traffic and stuff around Coventry, was just grim. Um, mm. uh, just, just wasn't great. But as I say, right road, right time. The steering was fantastic. If it was smooth enough that you didn't feel that you were skimming from crest to crest, um, it was it was brilliant. There was there is a button by the way in the Type R which is a plus R mode. Um, and what happens when you press the plus R mode? It makes it almost undrivable on bumpy roads. Uh, but actually, what it does is that it hang on what's the wording here intensifies the driving experience. Uh, no, so what it it actually it it remaps stuff. So it remaps throttle response. It's the usual kind of things. Remaps. So it makes it all tighter, tauter, makes faster responses, that sort of stuff. Yeah, it, um, it so so it tightens that up. It, it tweaks the electric power steering again, uh, and actually, what it also does is it makes the it makes the uh, adaptive dampers uh, much different. I think that's that's possibly the the big big difference there. Um, if you if I owned the car, I would only ever touch that on tracks. I, I would never use it on the road. It was almost unusable. It also turns all the dials red, which is kind of cool. Which is cool, and it, there's a little animation as it happens, a little animation as it unhappens. So, uh, again, that please the the inner child in you. Oh, big time. <laughs> it's a bit like the startup thing. You you get in, right? You get in, and it's it's keyless ignition, of course. And you get in, you press the red start stop button, and he goes, "Who doesn't love that?" I love it. It's great. Yeah, it's really nice. And it goes, and it goes, and it blips the throttle, and it, it sort of does. Actually, before it gets that, it does a whole, you know, puts the the needle of the rev counter right way round, and it starts from 168 and counts down on the speed on the digital speedometer. And there's some other little animations with lights and stuff. And then it goes, boom, and it goes right, does a blip and stuff. And it's it's a wonderful piece of theatre. It really is. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it, it, and, but let's be honest, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From completely. a hot hatch, isn't it? Yeah. You do need a bit of, th- you you want a bit of theatre. It's not just the, the fact that you've got wings on it and that it goes really quick, but it's... The, the getting in and starting needs to feel special. Yeah. The one thing I forgot to mention about all the bewinged stuff is that this is a this is a hatchback that has that as standard has four exhaust outputs, each of them at least two inches in diameter. It is not under under piped in any way, shape, or form. Sorry, so just whenever you hear it, go, it's not bad. Once it's <laughs> once it's going, to be honest, it's a Honda. Above all, it's an it's a factory spec Honda. Um, so is it a case then when you really press the loud pedal, a uh, pedal even not pedal, pedal, um, that's when you notice the sound. So it is, it's quite, um, it, because it, it always seems to me that can I can I be completely it, honest, mate? Any time I did press the loud pedal in that sort of manner, I was too busy focusing on keeping the darn thing on the road. Okay, I know that's pathetic right. sounding. There was this, I, I by the end of the week actually, my right wrist was really sore because um, it had been sort of basically gripping the steering wheel uh, during sort of faster gear changes. It probably means I'm doing mm-hmm. all of this, and I'm sure some of you will be listening at home going, "He's doing it wrong. He's doing it completely wrong." And you're probably right. Okay, mm. before we go any further, you're probably right. Um, but it was just. Yeah, there was a it was so much clinging on was going on, uh, but it sounded great. It did. It sounded good. I mean, it's just that I never really was concentrating on the noise whenever I was making progress. And I wasn't. I I couldn't be a passenger in the car because I was the only person on the insurance for the week. So uh, so yeah, I was never a passenger. Okay. Passengers made a so um, you've mentioned uh, technology wise. There was obviously mm. all the standard Civic stuff. Uh, was there anything else? There were a couple of bits there and pieces. Any particular that, Type R bits? Uh, not really. Well, other than the plus R button um, mm-hmm. and the fact that the if you scroll through the displays, you could have G meters 
uh, which I was... Oh. Oh, they're, a bit, <laughs> they're a bit in there, because the only way to make the G-meter go lot is to do really sort of swingy roundy stuff, and then I'm too busy concentrating on not crashing the press car than I am looking at the G-meter. But what I enjoy... You not save them and uh, no, download them well, not and like monitor find them. No, later. No. Like a real saddo. Like a real saddo, no. <laughs> Do you know what? If I could have done that, I would have done it, of course, uh, because I am a real sadder. Um, <laughs> but the, but the, um, but the one that I found far more interesting uh, was so you can get the choice of on one view there's dials to the middle of the car. It's an extra little screen which can do dull yep. things like show you show you what track you're playing from your iPod and, and all these things. Oh, technology-wise, there was all that stuff, so you could like, plug in HDMI and USBs and all that kind of stuff that we're beginning to... We'd mention if it wasn't there rather than if it is there. Um, but there's another screen up above which has, like, your, you can show your radio stuff, it can show your... Um, show you trip computer stuff, but I, I never bothered with any of that because I was far more interested. Not so much in the one in the standard display that came up every time, which was the G meter uh, and your brake force and throttle. Okay. Uh, but far more interesting to me actually were the various temperature gauges and, um, uh, and the turbo, the boost gauge. The boost gauges are always cool. Honest. Um, so yeah, so that was there and I, I liked that a lot. One of the things I did find with the car, mind you, mm-hmm. was that it's a hatchback that has had this engine put in, this crazy powerful engine put in it, right? And a lot of the systems were made for like the one liter, the one point six petrol and stuff, the one point six diesel, two liter petrol, one point eight petrol. Okay, uh, and yeah. that was fine in them, but the stuff like the sat nav just could not keep up. If you were on a, a road which was kind of a bit of a straight, bit of a sharp corner, bit of a straight, bit of a sharp corner, bit of a straight, bit of a sharp corner, it got itself in a total paddy trying to work out. What you mean, like North Wales? Like North Wales. It could not work out <laughs> if it was meant to be zoomed in, zoomed out. If it was somewhere, And there was no, I couldn't find a way of manually just saying, look, just stay at this zoom level. Because I didn't. You don't really know the road, but you know it, it was because I didn't know where the next turning was coming, or if there were cut. Yeah, if there were, yeah. I like sat nav on in the car because then I can see if there's like crossroads or there's 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 going to be people joining the road that maybe you can't see the the incoming road. So I like to know, yeah, you know, for safety's sake, what what's coming up ahead. And you just could not It was just in and out and in and out and in and out. And the other one that couldn't keep up was the basically the headlamps. I didn't find the headlamps were particularly good at all. Um, and the automatic um, high beam and dipping was incredibly slow too. And I, to be honest, I found uh, one one evening on a, on a dark road that, that I know very well, I, um, I found that the thing that was controlling my speed was that the headlamps weren't bright enough, weren't nearly bright enough. Um, Along for significantly worse than 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 I'm not gonna say than any of my cars, but at least two of them. Um, so I I didn't find, I think one of the first things I'd have to do is up, upgrade the headlamp bulbs. There's no there's no option to upgrade from from Honda. You you basically you get that spec or you get that spec plus some two and a half grams worth of carbon fibery bits. Um. So yeah, so so that that kind of thing was a bit annoying, but that that's what happens, I think, whenever you take a hatchback and you you just add power um, and suspension in this case, of course, to it. Uh, is that some of those other systems I can't quite catch up? Um, okay. The amount of power you're adding as well, I do wonder. It's one of the things that would make me think: Would I buy this or not? Is is can it actually, you know? Despite the fact that it's a Honda, so it's going to be really well built. Um, anyway, it's going to work. It's, it's going, going to, to work. Keep going. How long would it keep working? Because just the stress is being put through this car that wasn't really designed for that kind of thing. You just it sort of sets off a just because yeah. Because I had the one point eight Sport, and that was I mean that was nippy. I mean it wasn't yeah. fast, but it was nippy, and it had a few of the um, exterior flourishes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a few red slash. It was a white car, but it had a few red slashes and some trims and stuff that. So it made it look quite neat. Yeah. Um, uh, but it wasn't the full-on Type R 
exterior. Um, it was a little bit buff, not the full-on sort of Arnie... Yeah, yeah. The, the Type R is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that. that it, it, it depends on what you're after. If you're after... It sounds like if you're after a fun weekendy type car. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Then it's it's perfect. The type R. But if you if you wanted something for everyday use, mm-hmm. maybe you wanna try and and you like the Civic, you may want to try uh one of the other cars in the range. Yeah. You might be if you want some As a comparison. If you're someone who's doing maybe lots of lots of uh, most way miles, you, you're doing a bit of town and a bit of far more mixed driving, perhaps. You do need it to work going into towns and cities and things. Then you you may be better served with something a little bit in the same kind of price bracket, but a little bit less extreme in its execution. So maybe a Golf R, um, the Seat, Seat Leon Cupra um, 2, 290. Uh, which is a bit bit less powerful, but but a lot more. There's a lot more. It's it's a lot more usable, I think. Especially now, there's a four wheel drive version of that. That's going to be quite something. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you might be better off looking at that kind of car. Uh, otherwise, what other competition is there? Well, there's your Focus RS if you can get hold of one, um, and um, something else I've completely missed. There's a Megan Sport. There's a Megan. Yeah. There's a yeah. Megan Sport as well, which is a bit more stripped out uh, generally. So that's mm. that, that's kind of where you're going. I mean, certainly looks wise, I feel that the Type R is even more extreme than the than the, the Focus uh, than the Focus RS. The, the other thing I was worried about with the, the Civic is the first car in a while that I've been nervous about parking places. I think part of that was down to the fact that uh, a Top Gear journalist who lives not far from me had a had a Leon stolen from outside his house. Like to the day before I got this. Days before. No, it was yes. the day before. And so mm. every time I had to take this anywhere, it was like I had to play musical cars because basically I, I blocked, I blocked it tightly into the drive with the vehicle, so it couldn't be, it couldn't be, um, you couldn't get it out basically without moving a couple of tons worth of car. Mm. So, so yeah, so that was about so it. What, what's what? So what's your summary then? Total summary it was, I really enjoyed it in the right place at the right time. Uh, it was fantastic, and if if I was driving on tracks, if I was driving on really sm- smooth, fast sweeping roads all the time, it would be ab- it would be brilliant. But for the stuff that I do, and and, and for what I do, and I, I feel I am pretty much pretty much in there for target market. I just mm. don't know that I could daily it. It was great to have it for a week. Loved having it for a week. Thank you so much, Honda. Uh, uh, you know, thanks Simon. Thanks Tom. I really appreciated it. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't want one as a daily, which is a huge shame. I think that it, it kind of crushes me slightly because I was so looking forward to getting this. Mm. Um, I really was. I, I was so excited about this. That, but, um, but yeah, but yeah, that's my grown up. That's my grown up opinion anyway. Okay. I'm slightly depressed. I'm slightly depressed. I'm saying I don't want one as a daily driver, but I think that shows that I'm getting old. Yeah, but if it doesn't if it doesn't work in your typical situations, which is a mix of roads, a mix of times of days, mm. a mix of needs to for it to you know you, there's times you need just a quiet cruiser to get you home. There's times that you need to go to the shops and you know all these things. If it doesn't meet those needs, then you know it's not for you, is it? So no, no. But there's there's plenty of people that it that it that it should be for, and just because it doesn't necessarily meet my needs, does not make it a bad car in any way, shape, or form. No. Cool. I think is that us that that's that's pretty much it for that. So as I say, thank you thank you again for to to, to the chaps at Honda um for for loaning us the, the type R for a week. It was good to have it. Thank you so much. Uh don't forget everyone that between now and next time you can give us any feedback and share your thoughts with the show at Motoring Podcast on Twitter and Instagram on Facebook, and on the contact page of motoringpodcast.com, the hub of all our activities. Please don't forget to leave a review and rating for both the Motoring Podcast News Show and uh, and rear view on iTunes or however your podcast app lets you do such a thing. It really does matter. Andrew, what's the best way people can get in touch with you? 
Uh, best way would be on Twitter. Uh, if you search for Crack Windscreen, you will find me. And if people want to talk to you more about the Civic Type R and uh, what you felt about it, uh, what's the best way for them to do that, Alan? Yeah, please do, folks. Um, and the best way to get in touch with me is Twitter again, where it's at AJP Bradley, B R A D L E Y. Uh, we'll be back soon, but until then, I've been Alan Bradley. I've been Andrew Clues. And safe motoring. <laughs>